This video is not something I thought I'd upload. I've had what I've called a siege nuke, like a content nuke on the back burner for a while now. Why have I not released it until now? Well, the reason being, I don't like to start drama. Not really as a result of drama making me uncomfortable. Those who have followed my live streams and get to see the unscripted side of me know that I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Plain and simply, I don't like to make the habit of starting drama in places where it is not conducive to my business betterment. I don't want to rock the boat when it comes to my dealings with Ubisoft and their product Rainbow Six Siege. But recently, I've grown tired of waiting. Operation Brutal Swarm has brought me to the brink. Mentally, I am here with Rainbow Six Siege. I present an image of myself in scripted content as relatively calm and snarky, yes, but to tell the truth, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I am passionate about what I do. I am passionate about teaching people, and I want people to be the best version of themselves. I'm gonna talk very candidly about the Rainbow Six Siege content creation scene. Now, it's important that I fixate on the content creation aspect of this because I believe that the health of a content creation scene for a video game is tangentially related to the health of that game. There are also conversations to be had about the Siege community, as well as steps that could have been taken, in my opinion, to avoid the point where we're at now that are clearly not going to happen. To preface this, here's a clip from my live stream. And I, have I the, swear. I have the tea. I have the tea for Siege. Siege is the Rick and Morty of FPS game. Oh my god, why didn't I think of this before? Siege, Siege is the Rick and Morty of FPS. You know why it's the Rick and oh, Morty no. of FPS? Because I played Prisoner Rescue and Search and Destroy over the Call of Duty beta. Call Modern Warfare 2 beta changed my life, bro. Okay? Because I've been playing this game for eight years. I can't get the most basic, basic fucking requests from random strangers in this game on a regular basis. But during the Modern Warfare 2 beta, I had more people come with me and play off of my trades do the instinctual, instinctual things you do in an elimination-based game in the Modern Warfare 2 beta than I do in this fucking game, in Plat- in Plat Elo. Plat 2 Elo. All the people Guys. that want to play the game are gone. They left, or they're playing comp, or they sometimes play a face it queue. Or they stream. All the people Dude, that want to play Siege, not TDM, run around fucking one-shot headshot, have left. The only people left are these creatures. So if we that win this my, game, that is my theory. That is the my theory. Is, is Rainbow Six Siege made... players don't play, and it's always people who bitch. It's like bitchy teammates who bitch that you don't clutch it up. I dropped a fucking negative. I dropped like a three and six in an S and D game, and we still won it. And I lost the round that I should have clutched up. I was like, sorry guys, and they were like, yeah, you cool, bro. Siege, Siege, I top frag. Still get bitched at. This community is is run by lunatics. This game is a lunatic asylum. It's run by people who want to feel smart because they get slammed in other games. They want to feel smart because because they play like, oh, this is the this is the smart people game with operators and destruction. So I'm a smart per I'm a better person for playing this game. The Call of Duty. As if you play Call of Duty and you don't play Call of Duty correctly, they bully you in Call of Duty. Whereas in Siege, the guys that are yelling at you or the guys that are fucking up. And the regular people are like, hey, maybe like try it a different way. I see that he's active. Or the guys that want to play the game. This, this community is different. You know why this community is different? Because you guys actually want to actually want to win, but you, you don't want to take shortcuts because you realize that this game doesn't have shortcuts. And people treat like one shot headshot oh, as, as as a shortcut. And that's why there's so much of a disconnect between us and like the rest of the fucking scene. This channel appeals to a lot of different people in the siege community. It appeals to casual people just trying to get better. It appeals to people trying to get into the comp scene. It appeals to people that just you know, want to see a more like intellectual and like Secure sports like unpackaging of Siege, but uh, oh, this isn't the mainstream, this isn't the mainstream audience. We are not the mainstream. This game's mainstream audience is, uh, is, is bruh, is bruh Big Chungus, LMG mounted and loaded, the Lord, what the dog doing? And uh, yeah, take my Emerald Plains video for instance. Solid thumbnail, 
Got the stupid red arrow going. You know, clickbaity title, clickbaity thumbnail. Every metric here imaginable says that this video is going to do pretty decent. It talks about a specific item in Rainbow Six Siege that a lot of people can get behind. There's a new map. People want to learn the new map, right? No, they fucking don't. Nobody wants to learn the new map. Nobody cares that there's a new map. New content can be farmed extensively in other games. So no, it's not the algorithm screwing me over here. The algorithm doesn't really care. The YouTube algorithm will do what the algorithm will do. The algorithm is reflective of the traffic for this topic, and there is no fucking traffic for map content for Rainbow Six Siege. Arguably the most important aspect of the game to learn to get better at it. It's worrying because topics like Rainbow Six Siege tips, Rainbow Six Siege how-tos, that is popular content. That's a niche you can target. That's a niche that I target. So I target that niche. This set of data, this tells me, hey, you should target Rainbow Six Siege informational stuff. Okay, here is a piece of Rainbow Six Siege information. Nope, sorry, says the YouTube robot. The YouTube robot says, eh, people aren't clicking on this, man. It's too specific. No, it's not. This is 101. Map knowledge is like a starting point. Anybody at any skill level in Siege can benefit from more map knowledge. But I know something that the YouTube robot does not know. I know that high elo was filled with cheaters. That's why people aren't clicking on it. Well, you know, I think they should add, you know, more like cosmetics for ranked. You should they add more rewards for ranked, more stuff for ranked. So you get a high elo, you get, you get more stuff. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. No one's going to care. Nobody will care about any of the little trinkets that they add for getting a higher rank. If it's filled with cheaters. There is no incentive to learn Rainbow Six Siege at a high level because the high level is cheaters. So yeah, man, if you want to go into my comment section or another Siege content creator's comment section and go, uh, why are all the Siege content creators so upset all the time? Everyone's so negative. Because our revenue is getting fucked with. Our business model is getting fucked with by this shit. Our market of Siege information is being directly affected by these people. Here in America, game publishers are getting sick of this crap too. Cheat makers get sued for messing with the revenue stream. You know what they do with cheat makers in Korea, where the tech industry takes up a huge chunk of the economy? Jail. Right away. You walling? Jail. Toggling? Jail. You caught spinballing? Jail. My opinion? Based. Korea is based. Unironically. Capitalism, motherfucker. Don't fuck with my revenue stream. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. People don't see it that way here in the States. They see gaming as a niche kind of hobby. When in reality, the gaming industry is hugely intertwined with the tech industry in the States. So is Ubisoft in the best of circumstances right now? No, of course not. These circumstances suck. But here's the deal. And this is something people aren't going to want to hear. Siege is uniquely affected because Ubisoft Montreal, the developers of Rainbow Six Siege, do not have the funding or the manpower to deal with the uniquely targeted aspect of Siege. Siege is Saul Goodman's old man. Everybody knows that Siege can be taken advantage of easily, so it is a prime target. Now everybody is blaming BattleEye. They think that BattleEye specifically is just a bad program. The issue isn't specifically with BattleEye. It's a combination of BattleEye and, in my guesstimation, that Ubisoft does not have the manpower allotted to deal with cheats in Rainbow Six. Siege has a kernel level anti-cheat called BattleEye that runs on game executable startup. Here is a paper that I found in my research into this topic from the University of Helsinki, somebody's master's thesis. Dang, that's pretty impressive. From Samili Lettinen. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'll leave a link to this paper in the description as well. If we go down to page 60, it talks a little bit about the risks involved with kernel level anti-cheat, something that we're all pretty familiar with, with the controversies surrounding Riot Vanguard and Valorant. In the worst case scenarios, kernel space anti-cheat systems can be very invasive because they have full access to the memory in the user space, which means they can theoretically snoop around the memory space and gain access to private information. This concern has been raised regarding the use of kernel drivers, and they've even been compared to rootkits. Gee, where have I heard that one before? But here's the kicker. It is up to the developer to maintain ethics and use the kernel level driver responsibly. What the hell does the developer have to do with it? I thought you just, you know, you ran the anti-cheat and then it went bit, bop, boop, block the cheat, block the program. That's it, right? It's automated. Nope. It's not completely automated. It's just a tool that developers use. A kernel level anti-cheat prevents rewriting of game memory that runs in the user mode. A cheat program comes in, tries to rewrite game memory. Kernel anti-cheat says, hey, stop rewriting game memory. Fuck off. Blocked. We're creating kernel level anti-cheats because a lot of anti-cheat systems can bypass anti-cheat programs that exist in the user space. 
we're elevating the playing field here and bringing out the nuclear option because that's how pervasive this crap has become. Kernel level anti-cheat drivers meet cheat engine drivers at the kernel level. So it seems that we're in a little bit of a cyber war, a cyber nuclear arms race. Remember what I said about it's on the developer to maintain FX blah blah blah? Well, here's the kicker. Bypassing a kernel level anti-cheat in turn requires the cheat developer to have the skills to write kernel level drivers on the operating system that the cheat is being made for. So you need a dedicated set of staff at this level to constantly be working on this problem over the course of several days. These are line items that are given to employees that work on this stuff daily. They get new developments on this front daily. And so therein lies the issue. I am not confident in Ubisoft's ability to handle cheaters because the cheating problem is getting worse every year. These statements are usually PR gobbledygook on purpose because Ubisoft doesn't want to reveal their cards. They don't want to reveal what they're doing at the informational level, at the engineering level, because cheat makers will use that specific information to get around kernel level anti-cheat drivers. 8,000 people were banned just from BattleEye in March, and then it looked like it was getting better until it wasn't. Then over the course of the summer, all the nerds were back home, and then we started seeing more bans. But this data suggests, at least right here, that the problem is getting worse. 7,000 people banned in a month in August doesn't really sound great, does it? 7,000 people just from BattleEye. This population set in the last 30 days, about average players for Rainbow Six Siege just from Steam, 35,000. Let's be optimistic and say, okay, hey, you know, the total population is more reflective of, uh, I don't know, maybe 66,000 just from Steam. So not including console and not including people who downloaded the game through Ubisoft Connect and not Steam, we're looking at 7,000 people getting banned in August with a population set that is probably, you know, somewhat, I, I don't know how many people play the game just on Ubisoft Connect, but in terms of average players compared to Steam alone, you know, you're not looking at exactly a great ratio there. And then when we guesstimate the amount that's added from Ubisoft Connect, I don't think the ratio is, is much better because 7,000 people is a lot of freaking people. 95, sorry, 10,000 people is a lot of freaking people. And this doesn't include people that cheat, get that account banned, and then they buy another account just to get banned later anyway. So the fact that this problem seems to be getting worse indicates to me that Ubisoft is understaffed and underfunded. They are not properly equipped to deal with the cheat-making war that is being waged on them. And that is not the fault of the Ubisoft developers or the engineers. It's the fault of Ubisoft corporate. And it's clear that at this rate, it seems to me like Ubisoft corporate treats Rainbow Six Siege as a calculated loss at a certain point, because as long as they make net revenue off of this game, there's no incentive to properly tackle this problem. And in the event that Siege gets completely systematically fucked over by this cheating situation, they can write off the loss and then they can work on another live service model game because they make money from Assassin's Creed and all the other open world games that they make as well. So when Ubisoft releases this chart, basically kind of implying, hey, we're banning more people, so we're getting a better handle on the cheating situation. No, this is like saying, oh, we're testing for more Kakona cases, so we have a better handle on Kakona. No, we're doing the bare minimum of keeping up with Kakona. We're finally getting to the point where we can kind of keep track of the damage from Kakona. We're getting to a point where we can keep track of the damage from the cheating situation. But in order for the cheating situation to be termed as getting better... This number needs to go down, not up. This number needs to go down, and the complaint rate from other Siege content creators on Twitch streams, YouTube streams, and in content creation, the general, the general consensus needs to be, okay, I'm running into less cheaters. But that's not what is happening. What is happening is that once you get up to Diamond and Champion ELO, you're pretty much queuing up. Go watch some of these Twitch streams. I mean, you'll, you'll watch people queue up with cheaters every other game sometimes multiple games in a row. But let's go back to the, you know, the security problem. In the worst case scenarios, kernel space anti-cheat systems can be very invasive because they have full access to the memory in the user space, blah, 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 blah. Can snoop around the memory space, gain access to private information. I'm really, really curious how many people in the cybersecurity world have noticed 
how bad the cheating problem has gotten in Rainbow Six Siege and said, I don't know if I feel comfortable with Battleye on my PC because Ubisoft clearly doesn't seem to have a handle of the situation with their game, with their game having its memory being modified. I wonder if there are people like that. I know that there are a lot of people that don't trust Riot Vanguard for perfectly valid reasons, but I wonder if there are people who don't trust Ubisoft either and don't play Rainbow Six Siege, don't run Battleye on their PC in conjunction with Ubisoft because of this issue. So being concerned about Riot Vanguard, that's one thing. People being concerned about Riot and its connection with Tencent, specifically Valorant's anti-cheat, that's one thing. But to just go out and say Riot's anti-cheat is scary because it runs on the kernel level, the reason to be suspicious of a kernel level anti-cheat has to do with trust in the developers, not the fact that the anti-cheat runs at the kernel level. If you play the game Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege on PC, you trust Ubisoft with a kernel level anti-cheat on your system. A kernel level anti-cheat that, as far as I can tell, isn't exactly doing a great job on its own with the manpower and the funding that Ubisoft has at the moment. You might notice that my thumbnails look a lot differently than the way that they used to. There's a lot more red arrows than there used to be. My old formula was easy peasy lemon squeezy. Put up the put up the person, put the put the text with the color matching it, you know, kind of the background, fucking whatever. Didn't even matter if the text was placed in a aesthetically pleasing way or any of that shit. You know why? Because there was demand for this content at one point. Everybody wants to speculate about why the population has gone down since 2017, 2018, 2019. Oh, they made the game less realistic. They added an astronaut. They only focus on the Pro League. My Pro League, my Pro League. They ruined the game with Pro League. That's the difference, Greg. They focused on Pro League and now the game sucks and I hate it. Actually, I think the main difference between then and now, in terms of this population decline, is that the cheating situation has gotten worse. Because all those other things, the art style, the artistic direction, and the Mapro League wouldn't matter. When it came to Rainbow Six Siege circa 2017 to 2019, I was spoiled and I didn't know how good I had it. I could upload badly edited and hastily put together clip compilations from my Twitch stream with a weird unrelated title and thumbnail and they would still do relatively okay because that's how popular Siege was at the time. Siege looked like it was going to be mainstream it looked like it was about to go off it was going to be in the same talking category with games like csgo and val then eventually people figured out the game is too freaking complicated to directly compete with csgo but maybe you could have a little kind of you know kill zone halo kind of situation it's not as popular as halo but it still cemented itself as a respectable license this era is over i believe that if cheaters are not tackled in rainbow six siege more adequately and more efficiently, this game will have its servers shut down within the decade. Now I know there's gonna be the guy who's gonna do the anime smirk and the, huh, a decade? Give it two years. You know, I, I get it, 10 years seems like too long. But when those servers shut down, it won't feel like it took too long for me. It'll feel like those years flew by and nobody did anything to stop it from happening. I'll look at Counter-Strike, which will probably still be around. 10 years from now, Counter-Strike will be 30 years old and people will finally realize, they'll finally understand that video games can have a really long lifespan when you treat them like a competitive sport. Football didn't just stop being played in a span of two years. Football's been around for over a hundred. Baseball's been around for over a hundred years. When you treat these games like competitive sports, they can have a really, really big life cycle. And Siege's life cycle does not have to be oh, cut short. Uh, but I don't think it will matter. Because Ubisoft has other projects that they can make money off of. And Siege can be a calculated loss. And that's something people don't want to hear. They don't want to understand that Ubisoft is a massive company that treats an entire IP as expendable. So if Ubisoft corporate clearly doesn't give a crap about their game, then why should I? I'm not saying I'm going to quit. I'm probably going to make Rainbow Six Siege content for as long as I have a YouTube channel. But it's just a hypothetical to think about. How much effort am I willing to invest in a product that is not being taken care of? You beat the judge. Deuces.